Welcome back, everyone. In this video, we're going to look at force plates, and we'll talk very briefly about markerless motion capture. Force plates are very commonly used in motion capture experiments. So you see in the image on the left, someone has some markers stuck to the skin, and they're standing on force plates. As the name suggests, these are plates that collect forces. It's the forces between the ground and the foot. And these ground reaction forces, you'll recall from chapter two, they tell us an awful lot about someone's motion. The way force plates work is typically we have some sensors at each corner. Uh, you can imagine, for example, a piezoelectric sensor where a very small displacement corresponds to an electrical current. From the amount of current, we can determine the amount of force at each corner. And the force plate will resolve those forces to an equivalent force and moment at its origin, some arbitrary point very often at one of the corners of the force plate. Now expressing the force and the moment at the origin of the force plate is not the most convenient point. In fact, we would much rather know the force and moment at the center of pressure. The center of pressure is a very important point on the foot. Uh, let's take a look at this sagittal plane image here on the left. So here are a bunch of force arrows in black that represent the pressure that's on the foot. And we can represent those forces as an equivalent single force and moment. We can apply the force wherever we want on the foot, but where we apply it will determine the moment we'll need to apply in order to have an equivalent system. The center of pressure is the particular point where that moment would be zero. Now here on the right, we have the more general case that we have in a motion capture experiment in, in the 3D case. So here's the center of pressure, and what we want to determine is this vector r. It's the vector from the origin of the force plate to the center of pressure. So let's compute the center of pressure. And we'll look at this figure over on the right. What do we want to compute? Well, we don't know what this vector r is. Let's start off by writing a moment equivalence equation. So I'll write down m, which is the moment reported by the force plate at the force plate origin. And I'm going to equate that to r cross f. R cross F is the moment that results from having moved the force to the center of pressure. And we'll add to that whatever's left over. So we're going to move the force from the force plate origin to the center of pressure. That results in creating another moment, R cross F. And whatever's left over will be T. This is actually a vector equation. So you could write it as three scalar equations three equations. And what do we not know? Our unknowns are r and t, or more specifically, the coordinates of r, rx, ry, rz, and the coordinates of t, tx, ty, tz. Now you notice we have three equations, but we have six unknowns, so we can't solve this system quite yet. Fortunately, we have some information about these unknowns that we can use to make the system solvable. So why don't you take a few seconds, just pause the video, See if you can come up with the additional information we're going to use to make the system solvable. Okay, so either you pause the video and try it yourself, or you're in a big hurry. Uh, either way, it doesn't make a difference in the math, so let's take a look at it now. Well, as far as r goes, we definitely know that r lives in the xy plane. Right, This vector is going to live on the surface of the force plate, therefore rz equals zero. And we have two pieces of information about moment t. To illustrate this, let's just imagine we have a steering wheel, and we're going to apply forces to the steering wheel to create a moment. You might have heard a moment referred to as a force couple. In fact, a way of generating a moment on the steering wheel would be to apply a force on the left pointing down, a force on the right pointing up, and that will create a moment. Now imagine the ground trying to do that to your foot. What would the ground need to do? Well, the ground would need to apply a force pushing upward on one side of your foot and pushing downward on the other side of your foot. Unless you've stepped in glue or gum, there's no way for the ground to generate a downward force on your foot. And therefore, the components of T in the X and Y directions must be zero. So now we have three equations and three unknowns, and we can solve this system. Here are the equations. I've just written them out in full. And let's cross out all the things we know are zero. So we know that rz is zero. So this term disappears, this term disappears. We know that tx is zero, and we know that ty is zero. 
So now we can solve the system of equations. Let's use equation 2 to solve for rx. rx equals negative my over fz. We'll use equation 1 to solve for ry. ry equals mx over fz. And finally, let's use equation 3 to solve for tz. tz equals mz minus rxfy plus ryfx. Now what you'll notice about these equations for rx and ry, we have fz in the denominator. fz is the magnitude of the normal force. Now if the magnitude of the normal force is relatively large, then any noise in the signal is going to be relatively insignificant. But when fz gets very small, this noise will become more and more significant. And so as fz approaches zero, the signal will eventually go to zero and we'll end up with just noise. What this means is that our calculation of the center of pressure during foot contact and toe off is going to have a large amount of error, which is something we should be aware of. Nevertheless, these calculations for center of pressure and force plates in general are very, very useful in motion capture experiments. So let's just talk about a couple markerless motion capture strategies. These are initial measurement units, IMUs. Uh, they're actually shown here. These are these little orange boxes here. And these IMUs, they collect angular velocities and linear accelerations. And they don't require cameras. So you can strap them to your body and go for a run on a trail. You could go swimming. You could strap them to elite athletes at the Olympics. You can collect data in a whole bunch of scenarios where you wouldn't be able to with optical motion capture in the lab. Another strategy is shown here. This is using a visual hall method. In this method, you have a bunch of cameras looking at the subject, and each of them will define a silhouette around the subject, and they'll communicate with each other and kind of agree on where they think the volume of the subject is. They don't have to be anything special. These don't have to be infrared motion capture cameras like you'd find in the lab. They could be any ordinary optical camera. So in the next video, we're going to go back to optical motion capture with skin-mounted markers, very popular strategy still in biomechanics, and we'll see how do we calculate the joint angles from the marker trajectories.